Today, net making without tools. I like to use a different ridge line than actual netting material. So I have a piece of paracord right here and I'm going to take a piece of bank line. All we're gonna do is take this bank line right here that I have, fold it in half and place a lark's head knot onto this line. So very simple with this is we are going to make a small loop, take the two ends, feed them through the loop, all the way through and pull them down on the line itself. So that way, what you can see now is we have that lark's head with the two lines coming down off it. I'm gonna continue along with the rest of my lines. And again, it's going to vary on what size net you are actually gonna make of how many of these top lines you're gonna need. So I'm just gonna put all of these on here and then we'll get started tying our net knots. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to decide how big my spacing should be. Now, when we tie nets, and you'll see this in a second, we're really creating diamonds. I think if those diamonds are more square shaped and even, the better, okay? So we don't want them three inches long and only an inch wide. So we, I like to try to make my nets that it's consistent. So the width and the length are the same. So for this case, we're gonna go about two fingers wide with each one of these. So I just gotta open this up. Two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers. And keep my line set just like that. Now, it's gonna be a little bit backwards, but the way I'm doing this isn't with a net needle or anything specific, so it's very easy to follow along from where you're looking in the direction you're looking at. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forget about this first line. So I have my first two lines coming down, forget about that first line, grab my two inner lines, and I'm gonna think about one finger. The reason I'm thinking one finger in length is because if I put two fingers, that's how wide it is, that's how high it is. Okay, makes sense? So this should only be about a finger in length. I'm gonna pinch them two lines, and all I'm gonna do is put an overhand knot in there. So I'm just gonna make a loop with both lines, pull it through, and adjust it just like that. I'm gonna come to my next two, and I'm gonna make it even with the first one. So again, I'm just gonna make that simple overhand knot, pulling my lines through, and moving that up. Overhand knot, pull my lines through, pulling that up. And then I could just adjust this as needed, and you can see I'm beginning to make that first row on my net. Now you could take as much time with this as you want on each knot. I'm gonna move pretty quickly along here. The knots, as long as they are in place and you have your correct distance between your line, the knots aren't super, super important in the sense that they don't have to be properly dressed. If they're twisted a little bit, it's still fine. I'm gonna come to the last one here, make my overhand knot again. slide that up. Now we have our first row of our netting. Now I usually go across and I work back, just back and forth zigzag. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside piece and the piece of this line that was already knotted and I'm going to measure two fingers, know about where I'm at, overhand knot, and pull that into place. Measuring again just with my fingers. And now, you could see I'm on my second row. So how I'm gonna finish this next row is I'm gonna take where this knot and this knot have these two pieces again that are next to each other, and I'm gonna knot them off. Simple overhand knot, just like that. Depending on my net size, again, I want about two fingers, keep everything symmetrical, pull that through. And you can see right here, we have the beginning of our net. Now I'm gonna come through here and work this straight across. Continue this process until we have our net. I 
continued on with a few rows and you can see the nets really starting to take shape. Now it's only small for demonstration purposes, so if you were going to make a large gill net for between a stream, of course you'd want to stretch this out, which is going to require a lot of cordage and a lot of time. So a rainy day like today, get yourself comfortable, sit and make your net and you'll have it ready for when you need it. These nets are also great for hanging gear. So in our wall tent many times, even my yurt, I made a larger net, I would string it between bunks or between the roof rafters and it's a good gear catch. That way I can take it down, it's packable, I don't have to worry about boards or anything in the way. This net works really well. Also carrying goods around, it works great. You could vary these sizes, use different diameter cordages, there's just a ton of different things you can do with this. But it's a simple process, I wanted to share it with everybody because I think that doing it this way allows us just quick, efficient in the field and not needing to carve or carry any extra tools. So this was Dan Wolwack with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize about the rain, but we're in the woods. What are you gonna do? Sometimes the weather isn't good. As always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Make a net, and until next video, stay in the woods.